Very important question. Are you taking care of your nerve health? Perhaps a question we don't really ask ourselves very often. Well, did you know that vitamin B plays a vital role in keeping the nervous system healthy? The full spectrum of B vitamins helps to maintain healthy nerves, and these vitamins are so important for your overall health and wellness. You've got to link the brain with the body through that nervous system. So um, Dr. Faree, who's now become a good friend, um, joins us to chat more about this and the certain lifestyle habits that can help you be more active. Let's wake up the body. Let's wake up those nerves. Let's keep them stimulated. Maybe something you can reinforce for me is who is at higher risk of having a vitamin B deficiency? And maybe you can break down those, those groups for us just so people out there might be able to apply it to themselves if they've picked up on some of the symptoms that we've covered. So the thing about nerve health that you very correctly state is that we don't pay much attention to our nerves and yet a lot of our diseases attack our nerves, especially our chronic uh, diseases. So people with spinal problems, uh, their first complaint is pain and the pain is related to the nerve mm. being compressed. The message or, being sent. Absolutely, yeah. the message is being sent up and down your spine. And, um, but what we forget is that nerves are important in soft touch, in, in, your sensation. You get a condition called fibromyalgia. These people oh, complain yeah. of pain throughout their body, so they've sort of got a heightened sense of yeah, pain. Someone very close to me has experienced those, those symptoms. So there's huge sort of debate yeah. about what's at the heart of what is fibromyalgia. Actually going on, yeah. And it's pain. And what is pain? But pain is something my brain is interpreting. It's receiving a message from the rest of me, and that's being transferred in my nerve. So perhaps it's a nerve problem. Well, it, it ha definitely is part of it. But then it's a circulation thing. So anybody with chronic pain, anybody who's taking painkillers on a regular basis, these are my really high target groups because sometimes what they don't even know is firstly the painkiller is using the vitamins to do its job. Uh -huh. And in the second case, if they had the vitamins in the first place, they may not have the pain. Maybe your body's not able to heal itself well. So it's stressing, it's going into a kind of a chronic fatigue strain. Not a tiredness thing. So my body can't heal, can't replenish, can't, can't uh, restore specifically a process called inflammation. Now inflammation is at the heart of most of our chronic diseases. Body can't heal. It's trying, it's trying, it's trying, can't do it. It causes pain, it causes disruption of blood flow to different parts of my body. And then of course when you, when you enter into that state then your body is using up all the nutrients that would normally be going to just promoting Abs health to brilliant. dealing with that, that specific That is a thing, cool yeah. point. Because I think people forget that your body's got like so much to do in a day just to like be here. What would your advice then be, knowing that, to people who, who do fit into or possibly are feeling that they fit into one of these, these high-risk groups? I think I want to talk um, about this. We keep referring to nutritional. A very important thing about nutrition is that what I eat is not as important as what I absorb. So when you're taking a nutrient that has been scientifically uh, tested, uh, it's been modified to maximize absorption through my gut because absorption through your gut becomes a real <laughs> issue. If I don't, as I get older, my stomach actually makes less acid. So breaking down nutrients and food becomes more and more difficult for my body. So this is the over 50 group that becomes really uh, a high risk group. And if you think about it, when are we getting our cancers and our diseases and our heart attacks, and it's all kind of this post 50 group, right? We, we're picking up things because our body's natural defenses are strained. How do we combat a vitamin B deficiency? I think the, in the, diet? the, the key term really would be variety. You just really can never move away from variety. Uh, there's the old rules of moderation in all things. So varieties as far as you can see. If you're not sure what variety means, think colors, variety of colors, variety of textures. Make sure when you look at your plate, if it's all golden brown, you're not close. You're cheating. You're cheating. Yeah, you're, you're, cheating. you're quite far away. So interestingly, one of the most nutritious parts of your body to eat, but liver. So there's more vitamin C in a gram of liver than there is in a gram of orange. I don't know how the orange won the PR battle for vitamin C, but we Super. love we love our, our orange juice. Well, that helps that uh, we love it. it <laughs> maybe good, you can right? close out with, with one lifestyle tip, yep. man to man, a lifestyle man tip to, to, to support our nerve health specifically. As part of a healthy exercise routine, I always recommend v uh, swapping it around. Don't just run. Don't just do weights. So the whole body needs to be balanced in uh, the left side to the right side. Don't forget about stretching. 
Yes. Well, this was probably the most balanced discussion I've had around vitamin B, so thank you so much. I think we've covered a myriad of symptoms. Remember that vitamin B deficiency is common and can be present in a various uh, number of, of symptoms, but uh, making it a little bit difficult to identify. So if you feel like you are at risk, maybe think about getting a test done um, or get their advice at the very least. But hopefully we've armed you with all the tools, the weapons to combat it. The tools is nice, brilliant. Nice, Doc. Lekker. Be well. Good Be well. Be oh, well. we forgot. Thank you.